So you remember you have the three basic common structure in your programming. The first one is sequence here. The second one is selection. And the third one is uh, repetition. Right? Okay, so it work in the selection. Uh, sorry, it's a sequence. It work everything from the from the beginning to the end, step by step in the order. So selection, you always have the the the, the condition to check here. And if it is, yes, you do something with one branch. And no, you do something with the other branch here. And the third one, the repetition, you always have the condition also to check. And if the condition is correct, you you do it again and again and again here. So for the chapter four, it's everything about the selection structure. That means you have you make you have to making the decision here. So basically, for the uh, for the selection structure, you have the three types selection structure. The first one is single alternative, and if then here. So we think about if you're working with the with the, with the, the, the <coughs> flowchart, you will see you have the you have the condition here, uh, the condition to check. If it yes, you do something. You do something here. If no, you do nothing. Uh, you do the nothing here. That is a single alternative or if then here. For the new alternative, if then else again, you have you all have the condition here to check. If it yes, you do something here. Uh, at no, you do other thing here. At that, you exit the selection here. And for the multiple alternative, you have if then else if or the case switch here. So how it work with this one? You can have multiple if then and so else here, right? So think about you check the condition. Think about here. If check the condition, if it's a, you do something with a here. If not a, it can be b, right? It can be check the condition here. If it's a b here, you do something with b. If not a, it's not b. It can be c. So we have checked the condition here. You see here. Uh, so if yes, you do something, and no, you do other thing here. That is a one example multiple alternative here. So here's an example of the single alternative. You have to eat something true, then do something here. And then you exit the program. Sorry, you exit the, the selection. You think about this one. You have the input here. How old are you? And you got the input in the edge here. In, in, the, in the slot name, it's edge here. Now you have to check the condition. Right? If it is, if here is a condition to check. You have to check it here, edge here greater than or equal 18 or not, if yes, uh, if yes, you set something here, you set eligibility is yes, and you do something, you write here, you're able to vote and do the other thing. If no, you do nothing. That's why you have the single alternative. Single alternative, that means when you have, you check the condition, if yes, you do something, if no, you do nothing. That is single alternative here. And for, for the dual alternative, you check the condition again. Uh, you check the condition here, if yes, you do something, and now you do the other thing here. You think about this one, you will be yes, you do something, else you do something here. All right, so now you see the same, right? You, the, the first one, you got the input for the edge and you have to check the condition for the edge here. Check the condition for the edge, greater than or equal 18 or not. If yes, you set the eligibility here, it's yes, a uh, yes, and you write, you can port. No, again, you have a, a, another option here. You have to set the eligibility to no and you write out, you are too young here. Right? So that's why that is a dual alternative because yes or no, you only have something to do with us. And you can look on the flow chart for the selection structure here. You have the single alternative here. Uh, you see, if yes, you do something and then exit. If no, you do nothing and exit here. And this one is dual alternative. See, you have the condition here. Yes, do something. No, do the other thing. And you exit the selection here. And that one is a flow chart for the selection structure. You have multiple alternatives. You see, you have to check the condition here. If yes, with someone, do something. Other one, do something. Say, so think about you check the condition. Is, uh, check the condition. If the condition here is one, do something. Uh, check the condition here. It's one, do this one. It's two, do this one. It's three, and N, and do this one here. Okay, so here is a guideline when working with the selection. The first one is an else condition only uh, condition that have to exist. Uh, so think of, if you think about the single alternative, you don't have to use else here. Uh, if two do something, then exit it. Uh, 
So the, the L condition is not always have to exist. Sometimes you only want to do something if something true and do nothing if it's not true. That is a single, single alternative here. And you don't manufacture the alternate condition. And if an uh, if an if statement the body is if executes, and only if the statement is true, right? Otherwise, no action is taken here. <coughs> okay, so that is example. You have two ways to write the type condition. Right? So the first one, do you have any children? You tie yes. Sorry, you tie y for yes. You tie n for no, and you got the response here. Uh, it's respond from the end user. Uh, so th this one here, the input. Uh, this one here is the input. So we got the response. You got the response from the from the end user, and you store the response in the variable name is here. Respond here. Uh, respond. So the response here, it can store y or n here. So now the next one, you have to check the condition. You have to check the condition here. If respond, if respond y, so you have to raise the question, how many children you have? And again, you store it in the number of children here and add it. And now you write the question there is complete here. The second one, you can do it here. They do the same, right? The input to do the same, but the condition here is not the same. You see, if respond is Y, then do something. Now the condition, if respond is not N, actually, when you, when you compare the logically, they are the same, right? You only have the two solutions here. Sorry, you only have the two choices here. Yes or no. This one, if yet, do something here. The second one, it is not N. It's not N, so it must be Y here. So actually, is that they are the same. So when working with the condition, you also, you are able to flexible with the, with the condition or so. It's up to you. Okay, so here is the example of dual alternative here. You have, you enter the cost, it's the input here, right? You enter the revenue here, you enter the revenue. So for this one, you have the two inputs, you have the cost and you have revenue. Now you do everything with the, with the, the calculation. You have set the amount equals the revenue minus cost. So you check the condition here, right? You see, you have the set the amount equal to the revenue minus cost. Now it's the time to check the condition here. Check the condition here. That is dual, right? So if the condition true, you set the profit equal to amount and you write this one the profit. If not, that means you make a lot here. You don't make any profits. That's why you, you set the lot here equal to negative of amount and you write down what the lot it is here. Okay, any question for that? Let me know. No, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so Remember about the selection, you always have the condition to check. Huh? You always have the condition to check here, it, yes or no. So inside the condition here, you have two ways to represent it. It can be relational or logical, sorry, the logical here. So in the case of the selection condition here, you have two ways to do that. It can be relational or the logical. So when you think about relational, it, everything about the Comparison here is a type of everything about comparison. You have greater than, you have less than, you have equal, you have you have greater than or equal, you have less than or equal, or you cannot you can say that not equal here. In the case of not equal, you can put this one. So everything about relational uh, operator is everything about the comparison. Uh, it can be greater than, less than, equal, greater than or equal, less than or equal, or, or not equal here. For the logical operator, it's everything about the, the, the n, uh, n or a not, something like that, something like that. So it's n or a not, we study about the logical operator later. So you see, the first thing is a relational operator. Everything about the, about the equal, right? You have the about the equal here, the not equal, less than, greater than, uh, less than or equal, or greater than or equal. Sorry, one thing about, one thing about it, when you want to comparison, if you want to compare them, it's the same or not, you have to put the double equal sign here, not the single equal sign. Right? You know that the single equal sign is when working with the assignment. So we think about, you set the act equal to 10. This one is assignment, right? Remember that this one is assignment. You, you assign the, the slot memory act here with the value of 10. But when you want to compare, if the act here, it, equal to 10 or not, you have to working with the double equal, 
double equal sign here. Right? This one is a comparison. This one is an assignment here. So you have to totally understand the difference between the assignment and the comparison here. So you see, if you want to compare them with the same or not, you have to use a double equal sign here. Right? Not the same, less than, greater than, less than or equal, and greater than or equal here. Okay, so we think about that is the example here. If you have the A here, you have an I, and you have B here, you have you store the number of six here. So we see if A greater than B, you check the condition here, right? You check the condition here. A greater than B. So we have it can be yes or it can be no here, right? So we see in the case A is nine and B is six. So A greater than B is correct, right? It's yes here. Right? So we have to write. You have to write here. Now we have to write A here. So that means you have nine is greater than six. Right? So the print now is this one here. Okay. So we have uh, some more example here. So one thing about the one thing about the condition here. The output of the condition always yes or no, two or four, one or zero here. It always black or white. Right. So we see the condition here, the output here. It always yes or no, two or four, or one or one or one or zero here. So you think about this one, if you have A here 22, uh, 23 and B here 16. So you see, when you compare A greater than B, it's two, right? or yes here, or one here, the same, they're the same, actually the logic is the same. A less than B, it's a four, or no, or zero here. A greater than or equal B, two. This one, four, two, four. Right? That's that, everything that is, everything here, it is, uh, National operator here. And remember, you have to cl uh, clarify the difference between the comparison and assignment here. Again, if you set X here equal to 10, it, it, it is not comparison. Actually, you set the slot memory X here with the, value, with the value of 10 in the slot here. It, it's assignment here. Right? But if you want to compare here, the X here, it's equal to the value of 10 or not, you have to use a double equal sign here. That is a comparison. So you have to clarify the difference between the comparison and the assignment here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So think about this one, right? At the beginning here, you think about this one. You have A here, it's a 14, and you have B here, slot here, you have 27. What happened after this one? What do you think? What happened if you set A equal to B here? What happened? Uh... It, hmm. yeah, it won't work because like uh, it's if you only put uh, one equal sign, then the computer is saying like it, oh. it's an assignment. Yes, actually it's an assignment. So now the value of A, we take the value of B. So actually it override here. Uh, it override the 14 here with the 10 to the mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one is assignment here. You remember that it's uh, this one assignment. here. It's not comparison. Uh, so after this one, you see both A and B, you have the 27 here. That is the assignment operator, right? And now, again, if you have the A here, 14. And you have B here, 27. Okay. So now this after this one, actually, it, it's comparison. Uh, you take A, 14, and the B here, 27. So what is the output of this one? What do you think? What is the output of this? False. Operator? Yes, it's a 4. No here, right? That's why. <clears throat> okay, so here's an example of the, if you want to get the positive result, right? So the first one, you have to wait. The third thing here, you can check if the number greater than uh, or equal zero than or not, you write the number, right? So if it's less than, you take the positive of that, you have the positive number here, right? The positive number here. The, the second one, you can check the condition here. The first one, you see, you, you compare the number greater than or equal or not. Right? The second one, you can check if the number here less than. You said you do this one first. Right? If, if, if not, that means you have the great number here greater than or equal zero. You write the number here. So actually, when working with the selection uh, selection um, condition, you are totally flexible with that. You can do whatever it is. You have to do a lot of ways with that. Okay, so now, what do you think? If you compare the on the left here and you compare the right here, they are the same or not? If you see so that if H here greater than sixteen, you can try. Else, sorry, you are too young. 
Now we check if h here less than 16. Sorry, you are too young. Else you can try. So when you compare them together, what do you think? They are the same or not? Tell me if they are the same or not. Hmm? Oh, no. Why no? Oh, wait, hold up. Just the relation uh, is different. Sorry? No, I, I mean that the output here is the same or not. The, uh, the output from program here is uh, they work the same or not. Now, think about yeah. this. They yeah, work the same yeah. or not? What do you think? They are same, the same or not? Yeah, it's the same output. Okay, now see. What happened if I have, if my age is 20 here? All right, so the first one, what happened here? The check edge here greater than 16, correct, right? So right, yes. you can write, all right, 20. Now about this one, 20 here, this one not correct, that condition here not correct, right? So again, you see, you can write. The output here is the same, right? So what happened if I edge is 10 here? 10 here, right? First of all, the first one, this, this selection is not correct. Sorry, this condition is not correct. So we have to work with this one. Sorry, you are too young. How about this one? You have 10 here. Less than 16, correct, right? Sorry, you are too young. So when working the 20 or, or 10, they're the same. But pay attention here. What happened if I enter the 16 for this one and 16 for this one? What happened? What happened for the first program here? What do we think? If I enter the 16 here, what happened here? It'll say In else. There. Sorry? It'll, it'll say else. Yes. So if I enter the 16 for the first program, it says that, sorry, you are too young. But what, what happened if I enter the 16 here? On the second, on the it, second program. It'll say else again, but it'll say you can drive. Yes, that is the difference between the two programs, right? So you have to very, very careful when working is the condition of the selection here. You see, they are look quite the same, but there are some things they are not the same. You see, when you enter the 16 here, they are not the same. You got it? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, so you yeah. can modify it. Yeah, you can modify it. You can modify this one greater than or equal here. Right? So when you do that, they are the same. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing you have to remember about the, when working the condition of the selection here. Okay, so I, I can see now you have the, I have the eight of you uh, involved in the, in the class here. So again, I am asking you if you have any question for the homework or if you want me to correct the homework, let me know. Um, well, yeah, so because you said it wasn't, we didn't do them in modules. I, I kind of thought I yeah. did, but uh, how, can you explain how I messed up so I know in the future at least? Or take some okay, so let me okay, let me check your, your work here. Shall we right? Yes. Okay, so here's our program, the one of the program here. So if you look on this one, the first thing you don't have the header command, all right? So I, I, it's in the, in the instruction, it clearly says that from now on, if you do everything with the router, you have to include at least the, the header command here. Okay. And in the, in the header command, generally you have the sum of the, the basic information, right? You have the sum of the basic information about the what is the general information? So what is the, what is the purpose of the program? What is the version? 
and uh, who uh, who is a programmer and what are the variable used here. Some of the general general information. Uh, if you look on the instruction here. Uh, Then see you have general information uh, in in the in the in the header command name of the raptor program the author the version summary and variable you the first thing you don't have right the first thing you, if you look on this one you don't have you don't have the the, the header command the second one this one is not pro, uh, modular structure you know that in the case of modular structure you have to break it down into sub module and from the main module you have to call them into the main module here. Okay. Have you watched Have you watched the recording video for the last uh, last week? Uh, I, I I didn't miss last week. Yeah. Um. I I started it, but I might not have finished it. I think. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. And if you have not watched it, at least you can watch it here. I I I attach it on on the video on this one. This one is made by myself, and you can watch it and you know the how to work with the modular structure here. <laughs> Um, on that video for modular programming, I actually didn't have any audio for it and I couldn't get it to work. Uh, it's not supposed to have audio, is it? Or Sorry, I thought it was, but I could be wrong. Sorry, say again. Uh, that video, modular programming, mm -hmm. um, is it supposed to have audio? Have when, when, when I record this one at that time I don't have my server so I, I don't have the micro uh, micro that's why I, I don't I'm not able okay. to hear voice here but okay I was I, just I was just wondering yeah it's not it, it doesn't matter much because you can follow the the step to do with this one so basically yeah. you know that in order to do with the with modular structure you can break it down into into module right you can break it down module and it's it's up to you. You can break it down into the two, three, or four, or five. It's up to you, providing that it it makes sense and it's convenient to you. So for this one, you think that you can break it down. You can break it down in in the, the two modular or a mod, sorry, you can break it down in the two module or three module. It's up to you. And one thing about this one here, this one is not correct, right? Because you see that if you want to to do with the commission n here, you have to. You have the sale amount, time, commission rate, but you have to divide by 100 here because the commission rate is something in percentage. Right? So if you want to do that, you have to divide by 100 here. Right. No, you got my point? You have to divide by 100 here. And for this one, you can you can break it down into the in the two uh, sub module. Very simple here. You know that whenever we want to the break it down in the two sub module, you just use the call function here to call the sub module. Right? So we can. Uh, you can add it here. So you have your input, something like that. Okay. So you see that this one here, everything here is uh, it's a uh, it's input, right? So you can you can cut it and you put it in the input here. So you see this one is a sub module input, and input here got everything from the sale amount, got the commission rate from that one, right? And this one you can do that everything about here is the output or the calculation or something like that. It's up to you. You can break it down into one, uh, in, into two sub module or two or, or three or four. It's up to you, right? So for this one, if you want to do uh, one more uh, uh, sub module here, you can put its output here. And from this one, you can copy it and paste it here. Okay, so now you see in the main module, you have the main module here and you have, you, you call in the two sub module, input and input and output here. So how it run? When it run here, the first one, it work with the input first, right? So we enter the here, so you have 1000 here. All right, the commission rate, you have 10% here. Now we do the output and it have the, 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 the output here. And one thing about the, one more thing about the output here, I set it, to you a, a lot of times that please, please try own way to make it more sense, to make it more meaningful in the output here. Try to use uh, the concatenation of the text and, and, the, and the spread on the symbol here to make it more sense, All right? So we see, if you look on the output here, you can make it more sense by, by adding the spread here, All right? You, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can change it here by simple uh, chain here, and, and you can put the spread 
you can put the spade it here. Or if you want, you can put the dollar sign here to make it more sense. Uh, so see, now you run it again, it makes more sense. Uh, so we have 1,000 here. You have the 10% of commission rate here. Now, when you compare this one with this one, this one is make more sense, right? You have spread here and you have dollar side here. So try to use the concatenation between the text, between the spread, but between the, 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 the symbol to make it more sense, to make the output more meaningful here. Some of you, I see that some of you, you don't print anything here. You just, you just put it here. It's not really good at all, right? You just print out the number here and for me, it's really, really, really terrible words. Let's see. You see for this one, you have the 1,000 here. Yeah, that is not really good for me. That is really not good for program here. Okay, so any question for us? Let uh, me know. Did, did you say we have a chance to fix that for to get better credit or no? No, so once once I really correct it, I don't expect it to 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 regret it anymore. Okay. Okay. Any any other question from you guys? I see that no, you guys, right. I see we have a lot of problem with the with the homework here, but some of you I don't know you are too busy at work or something like that, and you never ever raise any question here, and if you don't. Pick it out soon. You keep it from the side and until the end, until the end of class, you make the same mistake again. So we have to pay a lot of price for the for the grading here. So the sooner you pick it out, the better for you with the class here. So any question? Any other question for you? Uh, for the homework this week, I haven't looked at it yet, but could you maybe walk us through some some stuff that we'll be looking at in the selection, I guess? What's your question? Um, for for the upcoming homework, so we don't make mistakes, maybe common mistakes we might make. So or, whatever you are not sure about thing, you can you can email me. You can ask me. Yeah. yeah. And and I and and I don't know for I don't know for this one. I I uh, clearly state that you must incorporate the modular programming here, and yeah. you have the video here. But I don't know why you are not breaking down in in the modular structure here. I don't know why. It clearly says it here. Okay, so any other question? I'm good. Okay. Okay, so now come back to this one. So no more question from you for the homework, right? No, I'm all right. Okay, so now if you remember about the about the selection here, uh, the selection here, you have two ways to represent for the condition here. Uh, the first one, uh, relational, law, everything about the greater than, less than, equal, greater than or equal, less than or equal or not equal. That everything about the Rene's law. The second one is uh, logical here. So everything about the logical. The logical everything is, is uh, an or or not here. Uh, it's an on or not, they, or as they call it, it's a compound condition. So that means in the compound condition, that means you can you can combine them together, right? So you think about here. You think about yeah. What what is it? Uh, say to think about you you, uh, you only greater than sixteen, and you uh, so we think about you. Uh, you, you're able to greater than the 16 here and less than 80, something like that. You are able to drive. Uh, so we think about this one. So in order to, to, to use the condition here, you have to use a combine. You have to combine the condition or you can have the compound condition here. So the first one, you have to check the edge here, greater than or, uh, or equal to 16 and you use the N here. And here is the compound condition, right? And you have H here, less than or equal to 80. So in that case, you are able to write, do, to drive, something like that, right? So that is, a, when working with the logical operator, that is the compound condition. 
and you are able you are able to combine the condition together here. Or you can think about this one. If you uh, if you let than sorry if you uh, if you uh, think about the, what is the condition here, you can you can check it later by the condition here, right? So this one here, the example of the logical operator here. And when you're working with the logical operator, you can set split here. Uh, sorry, you can set split here because you can combine them together into one single condition only. Uh, you see about this one here. This one normally you break it down in the two uh, conditions. The first one, if x less than five, you write okay. The second one, if x greater than 10, it write okay. So we think about you have x here. You have everything from the positive uh, infinity and you have the negative infinity and you have five here and you have 10 here. Uh, so the first thing you see, if x less than five, that mean here, everything okay, right? And the second one, if x greater than 10, everything here is okay, right? So you see, basically you have two conditions here. You have two conditions here. And now if you use a logical operator, you can combine them together into single condition only, you see? They combine them together by the all here. If x less than five or x greater than 10, you, you write okay here, right? So you see, you can you can save more space from the two condition here and now you can work it on a single condition here by using the logical operator in, in compound condition here and the end operator is the same right so we see about this one basically if you have same is a condition here you have a negative infinity here and you have positive infinity here and you have the five here and you have the 10 here right? so see the first condition here if x greater than y, so we see everything here. You have everything here from the phi to the to the positive infinity. The second one, x less than 10. So we have everything from 10 here, all right? And to the negative infinity. And you see, when you have n, that means both of the condition might be true. So you have the overlap here. So in, actually for this one, everything from the phi to the 10, it is a, it is, it is a correct condition here. Okay. So think about if you want to, to get the response from the from the user and the user, if you want to put the yes here, you can put the Y or, or capital Y here. So you can check here, if respond here equal to the capital Y or respond here equal to the lower K Y here. So actually it's the K of the compound condition here also. The not operator is totally opposite. Now it's a totally opposite here. So we think about if you want to compare if you want to compare not a less than b, that means a here greater than or equal b. So in the case, in the case a here greater than or equal b, that is true here, right? <coughs> okay, and that is a true table here. That is a true table here. And remember this one here now. It is for the for the all here. For all here, the the output is true when at least the one is true. You think about you have the true here, so we only have true here. Right. Anytime you have one two, you have a two here. So the output of all here is four when only both of the two inputs is four. You see, when both of them are four, you have four here. And in any other case, they are only two here. Okay. Now for X and Y here, you have the N here. Remember that this all and this N. This N here, the output is only two when both of the input is two. So we think now you have a two here only when both of them is two. In any other case, you only have the four here. And for the not x, that mean actually it's totally opposite. So we see x here two, now four. Two here, four. Four here, two, and four here, you have two. Right? That is a two table for the all and a not operator here. Okay, so in the compound condition, it is very, very necessary to use a complete simple condition here. Uh, you think about this one. This one is correct here. If I less than five or I greater than 10, this one is not correct, right? Because you have to complete the, 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 the single condition here. So we have to put it here. So that is the first condition. And you have I here is the second condition here, right? So that is something you have to pay attention when working with the compound condition here. Okay, so here's the example. Here's the example here. So that is the first way using the end here. All right, the end here. So the worker who earned less than 10% per hour 
uh, paid uh, 1.5 times to the normal rate for the overtime. Uh, it's overtime here. So worker who earns uh, 10 or more per hour are uh, paid their regular hour rate, regardless of the number of work here. Okay, and if working more than 40 hours, it, it considers the overtime here. And this is the program here. All right, so we think about the condition here. You think about the condition. If you look on the on the problem the statement here, what do you think? When we got the when we got the the, 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 the overtime paid here. When we you got the overtime paid. If you look on the statement here, problem statement statement here. In what condition you will got the overtime paid here? When the uh value for hours is over 40. Anything else? Uh, Actually, if you look on this one here, uh, if you look on, if you look on this one, if you earn less than 10, if you earn less than 10 per hour, you will got overtime for the overtime hour. Uh, that is the, that's the first condition. And the second condition here, you see that you only working more than more than uh, forty hour. It's a considered overtime. So actually, this one you have to meet two condition here in order to go to overtime. But the first one, you the pay rate here must be less than ten. This one here, huh? And the second condition here, you must work more than forty. That's why you have ending here. So when you only got overtime when you meet the two condition, the first one the pay rate less than ten. And the second one, it's a working hour greater than, than greater than forty here. You got it? Uh, yes. Yeah. You see, even that, if you work greater than forty hour, but the pay rate is greater than ten, you will not got the overtime paid here. That's so the thing. If, if you were That's to do this in modules, one module would be if, and the other module would be else. Is that correct? Sorry, say again. If if you were to do this in module uh, form, uh, would one module be if and one would be no, 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 no. It's not the case. It's not. It's not a case of modular structure here. Okay, not in selection. Yeah. It's, it's totally different. It's totally different here. Okay, sorry. Okay, so he, you always have to very very specific, and you have to clearly understand for the condition here. You see that he's only got overpaid here when he worked less than ten hour. Sorry, when he got the pet less than uh, 10 per hour here, and and he had to work for the overtime. So in this case that even that he worked greater than 40 hour, but but the pay rate less, uh, greater than 10, you will not got the, the overpaid here. Right? So we see the condition here is a compound condition and it's an ending condition here. When the pay rate less than 10 and our greater than 40 here. And after that, you have the overtime hour, equal to hour minus 40, that is overtime hour. Right, so from uh, overtime hour, you are able to figure out what is overtime pay here. Right? It's overtime hour, time 1.5, time pay rate, and the total here is the 40 hour, 40 times the pay rate here is the normal hour, plus the overtime. Uh, so in, in else here, that means whatever it is, if you greater than 10 pay rate, or if you let work less than 40 here, is that the, ten, the total pay is equal to our time pay right here. Okay, so now can you try this one with the router? Try this one with the router here. If you look on this one, try this one with the router here. Open the router and do this one with the router. Okay, so let me show you how to work the selection here. Uh, Okay, so when working with the raptor, let me uh, close on the raptor here. So when working is raptor, you see, uh, sorry. 
this one here, you have selection here. The selection here is when you put the condition here. Uh, you to put the condition here. So when hooking is the router, this one is when hooking the selection and the condition here. So now come back to this one. You, what do you think? The first thing you have to identify here, what are the output and what are the input here? What do you think? If you look on this uh, program, what, what are the input and what are, what are uh, the output? The input, pay rate and hours. The first, the first one is the output, expected output here. What is the expected? Yeah, yeah, expected output is total pay. Yes. So in order to figure out the total pay, what are the input here? Hours and pay rate. Yeah, you need the hour and pay, uh, you have pay rate and hour, right? Okay, so you see, you also need one more variable here, it's over time hour. And you also have one more variable here, it's over time pay. In, in the case that you meet the condition of over time pay here. Right? So we see that you figure out you need the two input. Now you take, you have to take action here. You have to add user to enter what is the pay rate and what's the hour here. Right? Now do it with the router. Do, do this program with the router here. Come back. Okay, so when you, uh, you identify that you need the two up input here, pay rate and hours, you need to get it from the end user. Right? So we come back to the, you come back to the router here, you need the two input here. Okay, the first one is uh, and uh, the pirate. So we store it into the variable name pirate here. Now the second one, one is a working hour. Is the name of that hour, right? Yes, hour here. 
install in the variable name hour. Okay, so one, you really have the two input. Now you have to check the condition. If the worker here is, uh, is, uh, is, is uh, meet the condition to, to have the over time paid or not, right? And in order to check that, you have the two conditions here and you use the compile condition and here. The first one, his pay rate must be less than 10. And the second one, he had to work more than 40 hours here. All right, so we see you have the condition here, right? You have the condition here. You have the pay rate and you have working hour here, all right? That is the condition here. Sorry, I have a missing this address here. Okay, so we see that is the condition here. If the pay rate less than 10 and our rate is on 40. What happened? If the pay rate, uh, pay rate less than 10 and the our rate is on 40. So in that case, you are uh, you, you you are uh, eligible for the work, uh, for the overtime paid here, right? So in that case, you have to figure out what are uh, what is the overtime uh, overtime working hour here, right? So this one you have the overtime hour here. You have the working with the assignment, right? Everything is set here. You have working the assignment. You have overtime hour equal to to what? What do you think? What is overtime hour here? Uh, it'd be uh, greater than 40. Yes. So whenever you're working more than 40, you have to minus it to 40 here, right? So we have the hour here. Yes, we have hour here, minus 40. Right? So we think about if you're working for the 45, you have the pi hour of working hour, right? overtime hour here, right? Okay, so once you already have the overtime hour, you are able to figure, figure it out what is the overtime pay here, right? So now you have overtime pay here. Copy it. Come back to this one. One more assignment here. So overtime pay, it would be the overtime hour. You have, you see, they have condition uh, suggestion here, right? Time 1.5 because Whatever you did, you have the one point five, and you have the pay rate here. You see, you have the suggestion. Okay. So now this is over time pay, right? And in the case of the no, what happened? In the case of no, what happened here? Sorry, you have the total pay. You have to you have to figure out the total pay. So that. Uh -huh. right? Total pay. Sorry. Total pay. So what is that total pay? Total total pay is that you have a 40 hour of the normal of the normal working hour with the pay right here, right? And plus with the overtime pay. Overtime pay here. Sorry, overtime pay. Uh, for overtime pay. Yeah. Okay, that's all. That is in case that is a, in the case that you meet the condition of, of uh, overtime pay. And in, in the other one, it's if you don't got the any time with the overtime pay, you just do it normally, right? You just do it normally. So the total pay will be our working hour here. Time what? What do you think? Time what? Pay okay, rate. Yes, pay rate, right? That's all. So we need everything here is input. Everything here is calculation. Now it's the time to get, to print out the output, right? So now we have the output here. You have your total pay is, put the dollar right here. Total pay, that's all. Okay, so now see. What happened if I enter the uh, the pay rate here eight, huh? Pay rate is eight, and the working hour here the uh, thirty five. So what do you think? I'm eligible for the overtime pay or not? No. Yeah. Huh? No. So now you just do it normally here, and you got it time it here. Now if what happened if I have the if I have the pay rate the twelve, and the overtime here is the forty five. 
I'm eligible for the pirate or not. No. Yeah, yeah oh, because the pirate oh, here. Oh, you do. Not, it's not because the pirate yeah. here greater oh, than yeah. 12. Right? So you not it. Do it the same. Now, you only got the pirate. Sorry, you only got the overtime bit when the pirate less than 10 and here. And the hour greater than 4. So you, you have a pirate at here and working hour to 45 here. In that case, you got the, you got the overtime here. Right? So we got it. You got the... the you got uh, the, the logic how to work this uh, selection here? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. So that is the first way. Huh? You search the first way you in the ending ending logic here. You see, you use a compile condition. The first one, the first condition here is a pirate less than 10. And the second condition here is our greater than 40. The second one, you can use all here. Huh? The second one that you go all here. So with that, you you normally you have you have the normal normal pit when you have the pirate greater than 10 or you working less than 40. So we see in that case you don't got anything with the pirate and you just got the total point is normally is our time pirate here. All right, so we see now you don't use any condition any uh, sorry you don't use uh, the the end uh, logical operator anymore. This one you use all here. All right, so we say in the case that you you uh, you have the pirate greater than 10 you don't got any with the with the overtime paid. Or you working less than 40, you don't got anything with the overpaid, right? So we see in that case, use the total point is our time pay rate here. And else, that means you either have a pay rate greater than, than uh, greater than, uh, less than 10 and our greater than 40, you have everything here. Okay, so we see that you can use the end or all here, but the output basically is the same. Right, so it's up to you. You have to very, very flexible with the condition here. So if you go, if you go back to this one, you can modify the program here. You can modify the, pro, the program here. Now you can, if you you think the, the ending here, the all here. Right, so now we have the all here. All here. But in that case, you have the pirate here greater than or equal to 10. Right? All working hour less than 40. So what happened? In the case of that, you have to flip it here. So the point here and over time here. You see, well, exactly the same. The logic here, the output it will be exactly the same, but you can use the ending or the ordering here. It's up to you. And you have to totally flexible with that one. It makes sense? Yes. yes. OK. So here's the flow chart. You see, the first one you're using ending here. If pirate less than 10 and our grid than 40, in that case, you got the overtime here. And in the other case, you don't have any overtime. This one. This one is all here, right? So if you already have the pirate greater than 10 or our less than 40, you have no way to go to overpaid here, right? Okay, so now we're working with the hierarchy. Of the operation that means it's a priority priority of the operation or order of the pre-sentence here so in some time you know that you, you can use a compile right you have you able to use a compile condition so in the case of compiled condition you have to aware of the order of priority here so which one might come first right so we think about if you think about the arithmetic operator everything about the everything about the division, the multi, uh, multiplication or modular, something like that. So everything with arithmetic operator, the first thing, you always have the, the parenthesis here. You have to do everything with the parenthesis first. The, the, the next one is the exponent. Right? The third one is everything with the multiplication, division and modular. And the last one is the addition and subtraction here. They work in the priority. Right? The first one, parenthesis. Second, exponent. The third one, multiplication, division, modulus. And the fourth one, addition and subtraction here. <clears throat> so in the case of relational, you know, relational, that means greater than, less than, or equal, they are the same order. They have the same priority. So we can do whatever it is, right? You have less than, less than, or equal, greater than, greater than, or equal, the same or not the same. They have the same order here. They have the same priority here. And now we're working with a logical operator. Logical operator, I think about the not and 
and all so you also have to work in the in the priority order here you have to work with not first then you work with n then you work with all here so <clears throat> Okay, so what do you think? What do you think? If you have the Q here, it's a three, and R here is a five, what do you think? What is the output of this one? Of course, you know that for the condition output only two or four away, right? So what do you think? If you look on this one, what do you think? The, the output here is two or four. And what you have to do first? If you look on the, on the priority here, you have to do everything is not first, right? So we see. Q equal to three, Q greater than three. This one is a four. At the north of the four, this one is true here, right? So now this one is true here. This one is true here. Now, the next one you have to do the ending here, right? You have to work in the ending here. So <clears throat> you have this one here, you work in the ending. What do you think? R less than five, it's a four, right? This one four here. Now. Q minus R, what's the Q minus R? Negative, uh, negative two, less than zero, it's two here, right? So we see you have four and two, you have four here, right? So the next one, you have two or four, you have two here, right? So you have, you have to remember that in the case when working the arithmetic and the log logical operator here, you have to pay attention of the order of priority here. Okay, so the third, uh, the, the, the one more, uh, Tie is a Boolean tie. You know that Boolean tie, everything is true or false, right? It's true or false. It's the output of the condition here. Uh, what is this? Okay, so that's, that's the thing you also have to pay attention when working with the comparison here. That is ASCII code and the comparing chain, right? It's ASCII code. So if you, uh, I think on the, on the module two, you will uh, study about the ASCII code. So that means when you enter the number, the character A, enter the character B, C, D, as a computer understand what is A, what is B by translating from A to the ASCII code here, right? So if you have the number of the ASCII code here. Yeah. Say for this one, for the four, four, four. I think in the module two here. Any questions so far? Let me know. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So slow. Okay, so that is ASCII code. So normally when they uh, they uh, translate its uh, character into the zero and one in the binary, right? So we think about, we think about say you have the capital A here, you actually, it have the binary to one, zero, 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 one here in binary. And it, it, if you convert it dec in decimal, you have the uh, 65 here and so on and so forth, right? So every character in the, in the keyboard here, it will translate it into the binary. That is the ASCII code here. Okay, so if you remember about the character can be uh, defined as a symbol that can be tied on the keyboard. And this uh, symbol includes special character here, right? 
and you have the characters and it's a more precise description characters so, and you can use here so when working with ascii code you can use the relational operator if you want to compare here you have less than greater than or uh, less than or equal greater than not equal equal and greater than equal here you can apply it to any string or character here so now think about come back to this one if you think about you have a character a here you see you have the decimal value of 65 and you have the character f here it have decimal uh, value of the four, uh, 70 here so when you compare them together the character a here with less than character b so, sorry less than character f because you see you have 65 here less than 70. Right? so when you compare them together say you have the a here and you will compare with less than F here, All right? You have a true for this one. You have true for this one because uh, in in the ASCII code, this one is 65 in decimal, and this one is a 70. So when you compare them together, this one is giving out the output is true here. Okay. And remember, if you want to compare the character here, you have to put in in the double quote mark here. That is the character. All right. <clears throat> so think about this one the same. You see the upper upper case A is a 65 and the upper Z here is a 90. So when you compare A here, you put a less than a greater than Z here. What do you think? What do you have for the output here? If A greater than Z here. So what is up? False? Yeah, the four because this one is 65. You have no way greater than 90 here. So it's a four here. Right? That's the thing. <clears throat> uh, Okay, so that's why when you compare them together, you are able to, to figure out what is the what is the output of the operator uh, logical here. Okay, so now that that is the case when you compare when you compare the character, right? You just look it up. You just look it up into into the ASCII code here, and you know which one is greater than or equal or or, or less than here. So what happened in the case of string? I uh, in the case of string here. Uh, in the case of string here, so what do you think? Why well, say if I want to 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 compare hello here to the to the zero here, uh, something like that. So in the case if you want to compare string together, it only have to go from the left to the right. I uh, the thing about that, it only have to go from the left to the right, and it compare every every single character together. So from the left here. From the, from, from the left here, you see the first character here, the H, and the first character here, the Z. So the first thing is they compare H and Z here. Which one is greater than? What do you think? When you compare H and Z, which one is greater than? Z is greater than H. Yeah, so whenever you have the, when you compare the string together, you only go from the left to the right. So whenever you have the string that is not the same, you just compare this character together. So which one is greater than? The whole string is greater than here. So in that case, you have a hello here, less than zero here. That's the thing. Okay. So now what happened if I have the hello here and I have a hello here? What do you think? Which one is greater than? Uh, hello is greater greater than. Uh... Yes. Yeah, hello is greater than hello. Yes. You see, you work everything from the left to the right. H and H, they're the same, right? So when the same, move to the next one. You have E and A here. E here greater than A. If you look on the, if you look on the, 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 the ASCII code here, you have the lower E. Why, why is the lower E here? And lower A is here, the 70, uh, 97, and lower E here, 101, right? So when you compare them together, when you compare them together, this one greater than this one here. Okay, so now one more example here. If I want to compare if I want to compare the hello here and it will compare with the hello here and add exclamation here. So what happened? So in the case you compare them together, remember only go from the left to the right here, right? So whenever you exactly matching together, the longer one is the winner. You see? This one matching, move on to the right. This one matching, this one matching, this one matching, this one matching. But this one here, this one is longer. So in the case, 
when you compare string together, if they almost exactly the same, the longer one is the winner here. So in that case, uh, hello, it's exclamation here, greater than hello here. You got it? Yes. Okay, that's, that's, yep. the, rule. that's the rule when you want to compare strings. So remember that you always compare it from the left to the right. So whenever, you, and you compare every single character together, when they, whenever they're matching together, move to the next one. When they are not the same, you compare this two chain together. The greater one is uh, the winner here. And in the case that they almost exactly matching together, the longer one is the winner here. Okay, so one thing you also have to aware of chain of digit here. So when you have one, two, three here, it is a digit. But if you put it in the in the double quote mark here, inside the double quote mark here. Everything put in the double, inside double comma, it is ching, not a number anymore. So this one here, it is ching, not a number. All right? So when you compare them together, when you compare them together, this one is true here. All right? Because you see the one character, uh, the, the one character here less than the two character here. Okay. Uh, okay, so now it moved to the selecting from the several alternative here. So, so far, you know that you only have the single, single alternative, right? And you have double alternative. A uh, single, that means you check the condition here. If yes, you do something. You no, know, you do nothing and exit. For the double, for the double, or uh, dual here, sorry, dual alternative, you have the condition here. If true, you do something. If not true, you do something here, right? So now you do with the several alternative. That means you have more than more than two alternative here. So in case you want to handle more than two, two options in a program, you can use a multiple if then statement here, or you can use a multiple if then else here. So we think about, you want to compare, uh, a, uh, you want to, 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 to classify the grade here, right? So you enter the grade here. Now you check the grade. The first one, you check the grade here. The first one, you have a grade, uh, grade is not 90, so, you, you set the grade here, A, right? So in the case it's not greater than 90, you can check it again. If grade here, greater than 80, right? So in the case of 80, you set the B here, right? So we see in the case of grade, it's not greater than 80 here, you can check it again. If grade here, greater than 70, you put it's a grade here, the C, right? And so on. That, you see, it is, it is multiple uh, alternative here. You have if, then, if, then, and if, then here. You see, if, then, else, if, then, else, and if, then. It is a netted, it is a netted uh, alternative here, right? So we think about this one example here. You enter the edge, and the first one, you will check the edge here, right? The edge here. The first condition here, you have to check the edge greater than seven, 18 or not. Right? If it's 18, you set, you set eligible here, right? eligible. Is yet here. So what happened? With it not so in the case it's not greater than eighteen, it can be greater than uh, than fifteen here, right? So it can be it can be sixteen, seventeen here. So in the case that it uh, it it greater than fifteen but less than eighteen here, you said it may be here. And in any other case, if you less than fifteen here, it definitely is a no here. Right, so you see this guy it is this guy it is from the several alternative here. The first one, it right, if here. Then do something else here. Right. Then here. Else now you have if again, then else here. So they net together in size together here. <coughs> 
So is that is a hint when working with the several when working with the several or, or, or alternative the, the thing you have to remember the number of n and if here always must equal to the number of if here. Right, the number of here and normally you can draw the line to connect them together. You see that you have if and and if here. Now inside that you can have if and and if here. You can draw the line, right? You can draw the line to, to see that the number of if and if here more, always equal to the number of if here, right? <clears throat> and one thing you have to remember here, regardless of how many possible conditions, it only one will be executed. Remember, it's the only one will be executed, right? So think about if you remember about the, the grade here, you have grade greater than 90, lose this one. Now, not greater than 90, it can be great, greater than 80, do this one. Now we can do some great here, greater than 70, do this one. But you see that whatever it is, you, you can put uh, greater than 60 here, do this one. You see, you don't care how many possible conditions you have, only one is when we execute. So we think about if you enter the 95, it will do this one, only one and exit program, right? So what happened if you enter the 85? With this one not correct, move to this one. This one correct. Execute this one and exit here. So what happened if I enter the 75? This one not correct. This one not correct. Move to this one. This one correct. Execute this one and exit here. So we see, I don't care how many possible conditions I have. But remember one thing very, very important here. Only one condition will be executed. You got it? That is very, yes. very, yeah, that is very, very important thing you have to remember. You don't care how many possible conditions it is. Whatever it is, only one condition will be secure. Okay, so <clears throat> in the case of if uh, you can do it in the long way, or you can do it in 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 the, the next tier. So in the case of the long way, you just check if the, if then do something. Right? So we have if and then do something if then do something if then do something you see you see you check here if score 10 set it's score uh, 9 or 8 set it here if score the 6 or 7 set it here okay and it's score on 5 and glad that i set it here they are in the long way very good so now can you do this one with the raptor here do this one with the raptor so first one, you if you look on this one what is output here what do you think? What is the output? The rating? Yes, the rating, right? And in order to, to figure out what is the rating, what 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 is our input here? Or yeah, that's all. For this one, you have one input. It's core and you have one output the rating here. Okay, so now do this one with the router. Try to do this one with the router here.
Okay, so now do this one. <coughs> Delete this one here. Uh, so you have uh, you have one you have one input here, and the uh, your red right. right? And it's not in great here. Yeah. So if you look on this one, you have a lot of selection here. Check the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Huh? So we have you have four selection here. So we can check the first one, first one. What is the first one? Great. Uh, sorry. What was it? This one is score. <laughs> oh, you're like supposed score. to enter the. Yeah, score so I, had, I had to change. I had to change the score here. Okay. So the first condition, the first condition is that you have to check if the score. If score equal to 10, right? You see that when you compare them together, you have to use a double equal sign here, not a single, right? So it, actually, the raptor is a set a single, but it is good for you to use a, the, 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 the correct format here. You have to use a double equal here. So in the case score of 10, what happened here? You set the red thing here equal to A, right? Set the red thing here to equal to A. You assignment here. Uh, and rating. Set it to A. Okay, that is the first selection. Now you have the nine. Uh, sorry, you have the eight or nine. Right? So we said copy it here. Said copy it here. Copy it here. Edit it here. Edit it. Score equal to it or score equal to nine. Set the red thing here is B. Copy again. Set it here. Six or seven, right? Six, seven, you have score C here. Now everything from one to five. Right? Or let's uh, greater than one. And and score uh, less than or equal to five. You have everything here, D. And of course, you have the output here, right? So we have to get the output. So everything is So now run it. What happened if I enter the the, the red uh, it uh, ten here? So we see in the case of ten, it's correct. I uh, so set red thing right here, right? And in every other case, it will no 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 here. Okay, so we see it only uh, execute for one, right? So I have the red thing right here. Now what I happen if I enter the red here for seven? This one not correct. No, right? This one not correct. No, this one correct. See here. This one not correct. Yeah. Okay. That is the way you're working with uh, this one. It's, if you look at this one, it's a long way here. So why is a long way? You see. Actually, when you enter the number 10, it have to do this one. And again, it only have to check for all of the condition later, right? You only have to check for the next coming condition here, whatever it is. That's why it, it goes a long way. So one thing is it problem here, if you have the complicated program, you have the hill program, it will slow down the process. You see that when I enter the number call, score is a 10, it 
it's the right thing I hear and I expect it to exit program instead of check the condition again, check the condition again, check condition again here. It will slow down the process of the program here, right? So we see that's why this one, the code is a long way. The long way normally it will slow down the process of program. You see, if you look on the on the on on the, the flow chart, you see the you have checked the condition here. Again, you have checked the condition here, again, and here. It is a long, long way condition to check here. It means slow down for a set. Right? And the other one is can you can put the method here. The method is that you put one if and then inside the other one here. So if you can you can modify this one here. You can modify this one, you put this one here. Right? So in the case not, in the case of not 10, it can be eight or nine. Right? In the case of net not 10. Not eight or nine, it can be six or seven here. And in the case of not 10, not eight or nine, not seven or uh, six or seven, it can be greater than five or, or, or less than, sorry, greater than one and less than five here. Okay. So we see this one is method here. So now what happened if I add the score 10 here? So when I enter the score 10, we check the condition. It correct, it exit the condition already, right? So it skip all of the condition here. It will between uh, between uh, um, <clears throat> accelerate the process of the correction here, so you don't have to run all along the way anymore. It will it will, uh, uh, it will reduce the time of processing for the for the program here. You see, exit here, right here, right. And now, what happened if I enter the number uh, six here? See, exit here. So when you compare when you compare net and as a long way. The net that when you look, it 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 uh, if you look on the coding here, you see uh, sorry, if you look at the zero code here, it seems that it's more complicated. But when you compare the way it's running, the way it's process, this one is better when you compare the long way here. You guys got it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So when you compare this one with the previous one, this one it will reduce the time of processing here. <laughs> Okay, so we see that is a method here. It checks score 10, exit program. You don't have to check this one anymore. You don't have to check this one anymore. Right? Actually for, for this one here, if you see, you can optimize it also. You can optimize the program. Uh, one more thing, you don't, you don't have to do this one anymore. You can check it here and you can delete this one. Yeah, see it 10 here, eight or nine here, six or seven here and anything less than six. It will be here, right? So we don't have to check out one more condition here. Okay, so in the case of some of the programming, some of the specific uh, other program, you can use a case slide on the sheet here. I right? use that, it's a select the case of. And you do something, it's correct. It break out here. So immediately exit the condition and exit the, the selection here. <clears throat> so here is a case statement here. You see, and there's a score and select the case. It is a, right here. You break the break that means you skip all of them and you exit the selection condition here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now we move to the four point five. It's the application of selection structure here. The first one is defensive program. That is very, very important. And I expect you uh, I expect you guys to do more from now on on the program here. So think about if you want to the court, you want to enter the court for, for something, right? And of course the court here cannot, uh, cannot be the less than zero. So you have to check the condition here. The first one you ask the end user and please enter the court, right? So, what happened if the end user somehow we make mistake by and there's a code here less than or equal to zero? You have to tell him that it is invalid code here. And in the case of the correct user, print out the code here. That is a defensive program. So in the case of the code less than, you have to you have to stop the you have to stop the programming and you have to you have to uh, you have to giving out the notification for the end user that you enter the wrong format here, something like that. Okay. 
or you can use the arrow chart or in the case if you division uh, by zero here so we think about when you divide uh, one number here number a divided by b and in the case if you divide for the denominator here is zero you will got the crash here the program will got the crash here so instead of instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of getting crashed for a program you can use the defensive technique here so the first thing you have to check it's a b equal to zero or not so in case of b zero you have to you have to print out that you cannot divide by zero or something like that and in the case that b is not zero you can you just do it normally with a division here okay so here's a program uh, here's a program you write enter the number this program will display is a recipe broker here yeah? and you input the number you see the first thing you can use this one here that is a defensive technique here or, or the the, the, the defensive program here you have to check if the denominator here it equals zero or not right if not zero here that means you just do it normally and print out here in the case of zero here it's not defined here okay so try to do this one you can try to do this one with the raptor here and you, you understand more about the defensive technique here okay so if you look on this one you have one output it uh, passive uh, broker here and the one input here is number here now do this one with the raptor. So if you look on this one, you have one output here. Huh? You have one output here and you have one input here. Okay, so now you get the uh, enter, enter number, sorry, not comment. And start in the number here. Okay, so now you have to check the condition. You have to use a defensive tactic here. Uh, you have to check the condition here. So we think about, now let's think about, I just, uh, I just set this one here, divide by number here. You think about if I don't use a, if I don't use a defensive technique here, what happened? I put, I set it here, I use assignment. Right here. And now this one is input, this one processing, and now I have output. Uh, I have output here. Yes, now let me run it if I enter the number 10. I have one over 10, I have one over 0 0.1 here, right? If I enter number five, I have the output here, one over five, I have two zero, uh, two, zero point two here. But what happened here if I enter the number zero? See, I got this one is a syntax error. You see that you have the error notification and program cannot execute because you cannot divide by zero here. Uh, so in that case, it is a, the program in got crashing here. You got the crash here, and in that case, in order to do the, in order to overcome this one, you have to use a defensive technique here. So in the case of getting the number, the first thing you have to check so if the number equals zero or not. Uh, you have the selection here to check it. Check the selection here. 
and the condition here, the churches number, when you compare them together, you use the double equal sign here, zero here, right? So you know that in the case that the number zero here, you have to tell the user that you cannot be, you cannot divide by zero, right? You cannot divide by zero. Okay. In the case of yes, in the case of no, you just do it normally here, right? You just do it normally and you put it here. So now, see, if I enter the number 10, it will be the same, right? I have the output here 0 0.1, but if I enter the number 0 here, what happened? I got the output here. Huh? You cannot divide by 0, and the program runs smoothly here. That is the defensive techniques. And basically, you have a lot of things working with the defensive technique here. So we think about you enter the course, you have to check it's a code less than zero. If it's less than or equal zero, you know that you cannot have the code less than zero here. Or in the case of uh, something you have the square root, right? You have a square root here. The number you enter must be the positive number. You cannot take the square root of the negative number here. Any any question for that? Let me know. Yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the case, you see, in the case of square root also, when we enter the number, you have to make sure that the number greater than or equal to zero. So in the case of that, you are able to, to figure out square root, this is a function here, you can enter this one, square root number here. And in the case of number less than zero, you have to print out that it's not defined here. So this one, you also able to use a defensive technique here, right? And the defensive programming, be sure to test program here. So make sure that in the case, in the case you're working with the programming, in the case of you're working with the, with with uh, with analyzing and, uh, and 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 designing, you always have to anticipate what is the, might be the possible error here. So we think about if you want to to do with the square root, you only you only have to think about what happened if the number is less than zero here. That all the thing you have to, to test on the program here, and that is the data checking. And the data checking, if you remember, data checking is everything in the in the in the in the in the analyze uh, step of the software development life cycle here. So think about you have software development life cycle, right? You have the analyze, you have design, and you have coding as starting here. And the design here, you also have to figure out the data checking here. What happened if I enter the, the negative number? What happened if I enter the floating number? What happened if I enter the ching instead of the number here? That is everything about the data checking. And you have to testing it. You have to make sure that the, the program runs smoothly without any uh, crashing problem, without any uh, syntax error here. Okay. Uh, so it normally you have to perform all calculation multiple times manually or with a calculator here. You can use data show the result when it's a it's brand of the installation structure is gave at it one here and remember it always check for the defensive tech the program here by when we be when we division by zero and the negative number square root something like that right and you able to check the input to make sure it is in the in the number format or in the character format or in string format by the by checking each number here, each character here, and each string here. So think about this one. Let me go come back to this one here. Uh, come back to the program here. Okay, so now come back to my program. What what do you think? What happened if I, if I enter not the number here, but uh, somehow I missed, uh, uh, missed typing, I put the uh, character here or, or, or string here. Huh? So you see, in the case of string here, what happened? you cannot compare the string with the number here, right? Because zero here is the number and you enter the, you enter the string in the number here. So in that case, you, you are not able to compare the string with the number. So that is something you also have to think when you testing program here. Uh, you always have to anticipate what it should be the possible error with the program here and try to, to overcome it by, by the, using the, this defensive technique here. So in that case, you can, you, you can use a, you can use a defensive technique by using, by using, uh, by using this one. Yeah, you can using this number here to make sure that the the the, the input entered by the user it is in the number format here. So I can I can modify it by this one. Right. So I have a selection here. I can have a select another selection here. 
Now, the first thing I have to check is number here, right? This number and this one variable here is a number. Number here is a variable name, it's a number, right? So now in the case, uh, it's correct, I do everything here. In the case, correct here, right? And in the case it's not correct, you have to tell that you will have to enter, right? You will have to enter a number. Okay. So now let me run it again. If I enter the number 10 here, run it. Uh, it's correct, right? Run this one. And this one, move this one, do it normally. I have the 0 0.1 here. So what happened if I enter the, the, the character here or, or string here? Uh, you have to enter a number. This is invalid, right? So we see by using the is number function here, I'm able to check to make sure that the enter, the format enter here is must be in the, the number format. Otherwise, I, I giving out the, the notification here. Uh, so I will not got any uh, uh, syntax error for this one anymore. You got it? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I did have a question. So in, I, I believe it discussed it in the book, but uh, in Raptor, it already knows the data types, right? When you type them in versus. So basically when you enter, uh, when you enter the, uh, when you enter the variable, uh, sorry, when you enter the input, it will understand what is the data type the input here. So think about when you have number and you enter the ABC, it will understand that you enter you already enter the, the, the string format here instead of the number format here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it automatically uh, ch uh, checks the data types. And also it doesn't, you don't have to initialize uh, the variable. No, no, in the, Raptor, in the Raptor, you don't have to do that. And some programs, they don't, you don't have to do that. So right. some, it, it, it depends on, it depends on, on, on specific programming language. Some of the programming language, they require you, you have to declare it. You have to declare the variable first and you have to declare the variable tie here. But in the Raptor, you don't have to do that. Yeah, Ra Raptor, it looks like it's an interpreted language. Like it, it, it's like, it's more like Python than, than C in the, you know, from the little experience I've had with both those languages. Yes, sorry, right. that's right. So for this one, it will automatically understand it. You don't have to, you don't have to declare it here. Okay, any other question? Okay, so you able to use uh, the, the function here is number or is character or is string here to make sure that the, the input here is in the number format, in the character format or in the string format here. Right, so think about in the case that you want, you want to ask the user enter the, the username, you have to make sure that the, the, the user here is in string format here. Right? Or in the case that you want to ask the, the user enter the response, it can be yes or no, you have to make sure he enter the character here. Okay, makes sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So one more one more application here. You can use a menu uh, driven program here. So think about you you giving a, a lot of option here. So you think about if you enter one, you go to the room number A. If enter number two, you go to the room number B. And the uh, option number three, go to the room number C. Something like that. It is a manual driven program here, right? So here's the thing about this one. You have the, you have the company, it, 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 uh, it's a lawnmower company here and they had the giving out the, the some the option here. So in order to, to, end, to leave the program, you have to enter the number zero. And if you want to add an item to the list, you have to enter the number one and so on here. Right? That is a manual driven program here, okay? So here's an example of the of the menu uh, driving program. You have the you have to you have to write a program to to calculate what is the final price when you want to buy a car. So in this one, uh, what is this? Okay, that is a in in order to uh, you have to write program in order to to figure out what is the final price for for the for the car. So. This one, you, the first one you have to, uh, you have to enter the, 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 what is it? The buy price, I think, yes, the buy price here, right? So when you have to enter the buy price, you have the sum of option here. The first one is the engine option. The second one is the interior uh, gym option. The third one is the radio option here. So 
So think about if you enter the big price of 5,000, something like that. Right? So if you want, if you're working the engine, you have the three options here. So you you asking him, please enter what is your engine choice? Enter S for the six cylinder, E for the eight cylinder, and D for the diesel here. Right? So in the case of the of the in the case he enters the E here, something like that. He has engine code here. It's a four hundred and 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 uh, seventy five. And he in the case he enter the interior chip with the C here. You have to add it to the cross here with the price here. And in case that he want to uh to 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 board for the for the G here in the radio option, you add the CPS here. You add the code here. By uh four more hundred here. And all of them after that you have the pitch uh code for each vehicle is five hundred and and one hundred seventy five for the shipping and the euro chart here. So totally, if you look on this one, the the selling price is output only one is output here. And in order to figure out the the selling price, you have the base price is input. Right? You have engine cost is input. You have tune cost is input. And you have ready code, it's input. And you have the chip check here. Chip check here, it actually it can be the constant here or it's a dealer check here, right? So see, you have one output and you have a lot of input. And in order to figure out what is the engine code, what is engine code here, you have to go with, the, you have to go with the option here, many of the driver here, right? This one here. So you can see, you can break it down. You can break it down in, in the modular structure. You can compute uh, the uh, engine code here. You can compute the interior trim here. It, it can compute the radio uh, code here. And the last one, you can display the output here. Right? So you can you can work it on the on the serial code or, or the router. It's up to you. The first thing you see that is the main program here. Right? Every program you have everything about you have everything about the buy price, engine code, you have trim code, the radio code, something like that. Right? You have the input price of this one here. You call, you call for the sub module. You call for the sub module. You call for sub module, and you call for sub module. So the first one it computes engine cut module. You have everything here, right? This one is the manual driver here. You enter the engine choice, engine choice here. So in the case of S, you do this one. In case of E, you do this one. In case of D, you do this one, and so on. Uh, what else? So do we have any any question for this one? For this module, let me know. Any question? Hmm. So if you don't have any question, let me see what you have. What do you have for this week? Okay, I think you have the set theory here. That thing you will have in the home, in the, in the, in the homework or so. So basically you have the set theory, you have the set, that means you have you set here in that you have the you have the element inside the set. It can be the element A or B or C or D or, or E, something like that. So if you look, this one is a set. This one is set. You think about this set here. So you think about the, in, the, in this set, you have one, two, three, four, five, five element here. Element. Right? And in the case working in the set, you have the sum of the you have a sum of the, you have the sum of the option here, All right? So, uh, okay. Think about this one. You can set. You can have the. You have the. You, you can. What is it? Okay. Okay. So we can say say you have the set. Uh, you have the file element here. Whatever. And you have the subset. Subset. That I mean you think about. 
you have one set here, you have to say you have set A equal to, you have the five element here, one, two, three, four, and five. And you have the B here, you have the two, one, three. So in the case of B here, you see the A is one, two, three, four, five, and B you have a two and three. The B here is a subset of A. So in the case you have the B here, it's a separate A because every element of A belong to the belong to A. You see two here and three here. Right? So the B is a subset of A when the every element of B belong to the to the A here. That is the first definition. Right? That is a subset here. Uh, what else? Uh, Union, uh, in the case of union here, union is you have to use the, use the all function. You can think about the union is all function here. So we think about you have the set, you have the set A here. You have one, two, three, sorry, two, three. And you have four and five here. And you have six, seven, and eight here. I have this one A here and this one B. So in the case of union, you have U here. Uh, in case of union, you have A, union B here. So in K of union A and B, you will have every element in A or in B here. So you will have, you will have everything is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight here. Okay. That is union. Remember the union, union is that every element in, 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 in A or in B here. So we see one, two, three, four, five here belong to A, right? four, five here belong to C, and six, seven, eight here belong to B. Uh, that is union. Remember that. So you have the definition of the subset already. Subset. You have union. Now you have intersection. So in the case you have the intersection. Say so you have the U here is a intersection here. Intersection that means you have the something to overlap, right? So intersection is that every element in a and in B. That one is ending. This one all right. This one all, but this one end here. So if you look on this one, what are the elements that in A and in B here? What do you think? Four and five. Yeah, four and five because they are overlap in four and five in A and four and five in B here. So we have the four and five here. So now you know that you have the definition of the subset, you have union and you have intersection here. So actually if any one of you already study the, the finite math, you would want your family would own the definition here, subset, union, and intersection here, right? What else? Uh, that intersection. Okay, so the, the, the next one is the universal, uh, universal set here. So we think about uh, you, have, you have A here. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, it's A, and it's B, and you have universal here, right? You have you have a nine and ten here. So in universal, it that means you have everything. You have everything in A. You have everything in B, and everything not in A and B. So you see, it's in this one, you have everything one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or so. So for universal here, you would have the, everything from one, two, three, and then the ten here. Uh, that is the definition of the universal. Okay, so you can use the Venn diagram here to know that U, U, uh, union B, that means everything in A or in B is here. Uh, you have intersection here, the only in A and in B. Uh, in A and B. Okay, and you have the not also. Not that means you have the A here, not in B, that means you have everything in B but not in A. So that's everything here. Okay, so let's come back to this one. You have another here. This 
What I want to do in this video is familiarize ourselves with the notion of a set and also perform some operations on sets. So a set is really just a collection of the distinct objects. So for example, I could have a set, let's say, let's call this set X. And let's say, and I'll deal with numbers right now, but a set could contain anything. It could contain, it could contain colors, it could contain people, it could contain other sets, it could contain cars, it could contain farm animals, but the numbers will be easy to deal with just because, well, they're, they're numbers. So let's say I have a set X and it has the distinct objects in it, three, the number three, the number 12, the number five, and the number 13. That right there is a set. I could have another set. Let's call that set Y. I didn't have to call it Y. I could have called it A. I could have called it Sal. I could have called it a bunch of different things, but I'll just call it Y. And let's say that set Y, it's a, it's a collection of the distinct objects, the number 14, the number 15, the number six, and the number three. So fair enough. Those are just two set definitions. The way that we typically do it in mathematics is we put these little curly brackets around the objects that are separated by commas. Now let's do some basic operations on sets. And the first operation that I will do is called intersection. And so we would say x, we would say x intersect the intersection of x and y x intersect y. And the way that I think about this, this is going to yield another set. This is going to yield another set that contains the elements that are in both x and y. So I often view, I often view this intersection symbol right here as and. So all of the things that are in x and in y. So what are those things going to be? Well, let's look at both sets x and y. So the number three is in set X, is it in set Y as well? Well, sure, it's in both. It's in both, so it will be in the intersection of X and Y. Now the number 12, that's in set X, but it isn't in at Y, so we're not gonna include that. The number five, it's in X, but it's not in Y. And then we have the number 13 is in X, but it's not in Y. And so over here, the intersection of X and Y is the set that only has one object in it. It only has the number three. So we are done. The intersection of X and Y is three. Now, another common operation on sets is union. So you could have the union of X, X, and Y. And the union I often view, or people often view, as or. So we're thinking about all of the elements that are in X or Y. So in some ways you can kind of imagine that we're bringing these two sets together. So this is going to be, this is going to be, and the key here is, is that we care, a set is a collection of distinct objects. And the way we're conceptualizing, right, conceptualizing things right here, this is the number three. This isn't like somebody's score on a test or the number of apples they have. And so there you could have multiple people with the same number of apples. Here we're talking about the object, the number three. So we can only have a three once, but a three is in set, is in X or Y. So I'll put a three there. A 12 is in X or Y. A five is an X or Y. The 13 is an X or Y. And just to simplify things, we really don't care about order if we're just talking about a set. I've just put all of the things that are in set X here. And now let's see what we have to add from set Y. So we haven't put a 14 yet. So let's put a 14. We haven't put a 15 yet. We haven't put the six yet. And we already have a three in our set. So there you go. You have the union of X and Y. And one way to visualize sets and visualize intersections and unions and more complicated things is using a Venn diagram. So let's, let's say this whole box is, you could view that as the set of all numbers. So that's all the numbers right over there. We have set X, set X, I'll just draw as a circle right over here. And I could even draw the elements of set X. So you have three and five and 12, 3, 5, 12, and 13. And then we can draw a set Y. We can draw a set Y. And notice, I drew a little overlapping here because they overlap at 3. 3 is an element in both set X and set Y. But set Y also has the numbers 
14, 15, and 6. And so when we're talking about x intersect y, we're talking about where the two sets in overlap. So we're talking about this region right over here. And the only place that they overlap the way I've drawn it is at the number three. So this is x intersect x intersect y. And then x union y is the combination of these two sets. So x union y is literally everything, everything right here that we are combining. Let's do one more example, just so that we make sure we understand intersection and union. So let's say that I have set A, and set A is, has the numbers 11, 4, 12, and 7 in it. And I have set B, I have set B, and it has the numbers 13, 4, 12, 10, and 3 in it. So first of all, let's think about what A, A, let me do that A's color. Let's think about what A intersect, A intersect B is going to be equal to. Well, it's the things that are in both sets. So I have 11 here, I don't have an 11 there. So that doesn't, that doesn't make the intersection. I have a four here. I also have a four here. So four is an A and B. It's an A and B. So I'll put a four here. The number 12, it's an A and B. So I'll put a 12 here. Number seven's only in A. And then number, I guess, 13, 10, and three is only in B. So we're done. Four and 12, the set of four and 12 is the intersection of sets A and B. And we could even, if we want to, we could even label this as a new set. We could say set C is the intersection of A and B, and it's this set right over here. Now let's think about union. Let's think about A, A, I want to do that in orange. Let's think about A union, A union B. What are all the elements that are in A or B, A or B? Well, we can just literally put all the elements in A. 11, 4, 12, 7, and then put the things in B that aren't already in A. So let's see, 13, we already put the 4 and the 12, a 10, and a 3. And I could write this in any order I want. We don't care about order if we're thinking about a set. So this right here is the union. Okay, so I think that's all for today. On on uh, on on Thursday, I will correct uh, the homework, and if you have any question on Thursday, I will answer it for you. So any other question from you guys? Let me know. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I'm alright. Okay, so if you don't have any question, I see you guys on on Thursday. Bye, okay. Bye. See ya. Have a good one. Good. See you on Thursday.